Right. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, today, my topic is on how to cast out demons like Jesus. Um, demons are real and demon possession is real. I believe you all agree with me. Yeah. So, but the good news is that, you know, the Holy Spirit within you and I is the qualification for deliverance ministry. When the Holy Spirit took residence in our heart, God gave us the power and the authority over demonic beings. Amen. And today I want to share about how to cast out demons like Jesus, but specifically I want to share how to live your life in such a way that God gives, uh, you know, in such a way that uh, God gives you the authority uh, over demonic beings. Amen. Our lifestyle is very important. So I just want to share uh, about that. So, um, yes, the deliverance ministry of Jesus is the standard for, uh, is the standard. So, when we look at the deliverance ministry of Jesus, you will notice that um, it was very simple, it was very straightforward, and it was very powerful. His power over demonic spirit was very absolute. Jesus did not use any kind of super, uh, superstitious rituals, nor did he, uh, he uh, take around two or three hours to cast out one demonic spirit from uh, a person. Amen. But, uh, you know, uh, he did it instantly. And Jesus is our example. So we need to follow uh, the standard which Jesus said. So, so we need to live the kind of lifestyle that Jesus lived. So, in order to cast out demons just like Jesus, we need to learn the basic before the battle. We need to be prepared with the basic before we go to expel, uh, expel the demonic beings like the soldiers, you know, they go through intense training uh, before the battle. And even the people who are compete, uh, competing in the Olympics, they uh, go through a lot of training before the Olympics begin. So likewise, we are in the battlefield and we are uh, we need to train ourselves in such a way that we prepare ourselves for the battle amen um you know like uh, just like sand castle under the uh, waves of the ocean the demonic power will dissolve under the power of the holy spirit and god has given us that authority so I just want to share what are the basic keys. Uh, the first one I want to talk about is we need to spend time in the presence of God. We see in Acts chapter 4, verse 13, it says, you know, the member of the councils were amazed when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, for they could see they were ordinary men with no special training in the scriptures. They also recognized them as men who had been with Jesus. So the people recognized that Peter and John, they were just ordinary people, but they noticed that they were, uh, they were with Jesus. So, uh, and also in Mark chapter 9, when we read the story, you know, like, Peter and John, they were in the mountaintop with Jesus and the other disciples, they were in the valley, you know, and when only when Jesus came to the valley, uh, you know, um, uh, he, he expelled uh, the demonic spirit from the boy. The disciples who were in the valley, they were not able to expel the demonic uh, spirit for, uh, from that boy. So as a Christian, we need to be in the mountain with Jesus. We need to be in the presence of God. Uh, and we need, to be in, uh, we need to spend time in the presence of God if we want to cast out demons. Amen. And the second point I want to mention is, you know, we should know the word. Mark chapter 1, verse 21 to 27, like uh, I just want to go to verse uh, 25, it says, But Jesus rebuked him, saying, 
be quiet and come out of him. And verse 26 says, when the unclean spirit had convulsed him and cried out with a loud voice, he came out of him. So, you know, uh, the, in this scripture, we notice here that it was very simple. You know, Jesus did a very simple deliverance session. Jesus said uh, to the demonic spirit, be quiet and come uh, and come out so the demonic spirit obeyed him and he, he uh, and the demonic spirit came out of the person so we need to uh, live in the world and be in the world just like jesus and uh, if we do that uh, god will give us the authority and we should know who we are in christ our authority in christ um, like I can relate to the situation because, you know, like, uh, when, uh, like first I begin the ministry, you know, I joined the ministry. I was, uh, you know, not experienced in the world, but the ministry where I joined was like, it was a new church and there were less people. So it happened in our, in our state, there was a big conference and there were a lot of people being, uh, delivered, you know, there were demon poses and also there were satanic worshipers, you know, so like um i was just assisting one of the leaders you know like and in that uh, deliverance session it it so happened that you know that there uh, it was a um uh, she was a teenager a girl so she was manifesting and the moment she saw me you know like she said i don't fear you and you know like uh, as i was young i was inexperienced means unknowingly fear entered my heart and it really, you know, I became so fearful, but, you know, I just did not tell anyone. Like I was just, you know, uh, the anyone was trying to deceive me, but I did not realize. But through, the, uh, through those encounters, I learned that, you know, I need to be full of the word of God. I need to be in the presence of God. And now that as I know the truth, uh, the truth has really set me free. And with that boldness, I can say that, you know, I'm not afraid of any kind of demonic spirit. But as God has given me that authority, you know, I can cast out demons like just like Jesus, because uh, uh, he is he's the source of true power and authority and um the third point i want to mention is we need to walk in humility we can see in james chapter 4 verse uh, 1 it says therefore submit to god resist the devil and he will flee from you so before you can resist the devil, we need to humble ourselves because God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. So we need to humble ourselves. We need to, uh, uh, you know, discipline ourselves, humble ourselves. And we, we should be like Jesus because he is our example. Jesus' power over the forces of darkness was very evident. And he walk in authority so as we humble ourselves you know like uh, we don't need to take two three hours to cast out the demons but it will just flow naturally just like as jesus spoke the word of god you know uh, we can do it because jesus is our example and paul also said we need to imitate him because uh, uh, as he, he imitated jesus christ and the fourth key i want to mention is about uh we need to walk in holiness we can see in acts chapter 9 verse 14 to 16 here we can see the story of the seven sons of skiva uh you know like um they were trying to cast out the demon but instead they were beaten black and blue by the demonic spirit you know so um uh, uh, what I want to say is that we need to walk in holiness. You know, if uh, we don't have that right relationship with God, uh, you as a believer, uh, we have weakened our access to the authority of heaven. So just like this, seven son of Sceva, they did not have any kind of relationship. They know the name of Jesus, you know, but they did not know that they need to you know walk with him intimately and they were just using the name of jesus for the sake of using the name so if we do that as a believer there is no power there's no authority 
And then, so we need to have intimate relationship and we need to walk in holiness. We need to do away with any kind of sin, secret sins. We need to be transparent in the presence of God. We need to be, uh, you know, holy. And as we do that, the Holy Spirit will enable us and empower us. And, you know, we will know our authority in Christ and we will be able to cast out demons just like Jesus. So, um, in conclusion, I just want to say that God is not looking for uh, perfection, you know, because we as human beings, we are not perfect. But what we need to do as a believer is that we need to know the truth, the fundamental truth of the basic keys, uh, which will enable us and empower us to do deliverance just like Jesus. So I just um, want to uh, summarize everything. So the first key is that we need to spend time in the presence of God. One and the minute. second key, and One the second minute. key is that, uh, yes, thank you, Pastor. We, we should know the word of God. And the third key is we need to walk in humility and the fourth key is we need to walk in holiness is if we do these basic things at times uh you know like it may be very uh, boring uh, but if we apply these things these basic keys it will really empower us to cast uh demon uh, demonic spirit just like jesus thank you all thank you thank you Zilitoli. um yeah just one thing what happened was uh yeah we can see your screen now i think you should stop sharing um yeah okay so just the thing is that um okay we one second sorry yeah we couldn't see you actually <laughs> we saw your screen but we couldn't see you that was the only thing anyway um okay so next be, uh, because because uh, it's sorry, your phone Foster, but I... yeah go ahead uh, sorry, sorry. yeah i just want to say i think it's because of uh, of my phone you know yeah 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 okay no problem no problem okay so next we have uh, thank you that was good thank you for sharing next we have um um okay rosalyn to share okay rosalyn if you're if you want to get ready set things up you can do that now yeah, Pastor, but I'm not presenting, so... Okay. Yeah, okay, sure. I'm not... Okay, hello, everyone. So the topic that I have chosen for today is fear, and my title is Perfect Love, Cast Out, Fear. So let's read the scripture. It's from 1 John 4, 18, which says... There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. So let's uh, see what fear is not first. So fear is not God-given. Fear is not designed by God. And fear is definitely not how the way God operates. So if I reverse this, and so I get um, Satan is the one who gives fear. Satan is the one who operates in fear and Satan is the one who uh, has designed this fear. So having said this, <clears throat> there are uh, three fears that I have listed, which is very common. And uh, they are like fear of isolation, fear of um, rejection and uh, fear of death. Like these are very common and uh, we see everyone going through this, uh, going through a, a struggle like in their lives with this fears. And the fear in itself is a very strong emotion. And if we do not tackle fear in time, it can torment us and uh, it can destroy the plan of God in our lives. It can terminate the our destination in god so it's very important that we deal with our fears 
through the word of God. And uh, let me tell you, the devil is working very hard at it. He doesn't want the believers to fulfill God's call upon their lives. He doesn't want the believers to move or to flow in the gifts, to flow in the in the plan of God. So the devil is trying his best to uh, to terminate the plan of God, you know, by infusing fear in uh, in an individual's life. Uh, we read a uh, uh, scripture, uh, 2 Timothy 1, 7. I'll read it for us. It says, for God has not given us the spirit of fear. So this clearly shows, this clearly means that fear is a spirit. And uh, because it is a spirit, it can enter. So how will it enter? It can enter with a small thought that we entertain uh, with our fear, like any fear that we are fearful of, say like fear of rejection. When we are, uh, when we, uh, uh, you know, uh, meditate on that fear with one small thought, you know, that thought will open the doors for the devil to enter in our life, in our minds, in our thoughts, and it will, uh, it will destroy our call. It will destroy the plans of God for our lives. And uh, we also, if I break, if I break this word fear, uh, like we all know this, it's it says like you know, uh, false evidence appear real. So which means fear is nothing but bundle of lies. It is the lie from the devil who is the father of all lies. And uh, Romans 8, 15 says, you have not received a spirit which makes you fearful slaves. In, uh, uh, it means the spirit of fear can make you a slave of it. So if you are, if you are fearless, you can achieve, uh, uh, you can achieve great things for God. You can do the impossible, but if you give in to fear, so that fear will make you its slave. Uh, okay, so uh, let's. Uh, we know this story, which ha which uh, is in which is uh, mentioned in Matthew chapter fourteen uh, about uh, Peter walking on water. You know when he sees uh, Jesus walking on the water, uh, he. Uh, you know, he uh, expresses his desire of, uh, you know, walking on the water. And Jesus asks him to st uh, to come. So he steps out of the boat. He walks a few steps. But then uh, in chapter 14, verse 29 and 30, if we read there, we see, we see that uh, 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 in some translations it is written, uh, when Peter saw the wind and heard the waves, you know, uh, that made him to fall because he fell down. He, he was drowning in the water. So few minutes, few seconds back, what we saw was him walking on the water, which is a supernatural act. It is a supernatural act walking on the water. It is like an impossible thing to do. But then he was able to do as long as his eyes were fixed on Jesus. But then when he was fearful of the surroundings, he fell down. He was drowning. So fear can stop the supernatural flow in our lives. Okay, so, uh, so we need to be very careful uh, in what we hear and what we see you know uh, uh, that can be the door for the devil to enter to infuse fear in our lives and uh, keep us away from fulfilling god's call so how to defeat this fear uh, we know that fear it's a spirit it can enter it enters through a thought and when it enters it makes us its slave and it stops all the supernatural things, all the supernatural flows that uh, that is to happen in our lives. This fear 
will put a stop to all the supernatural things, supernatural uh, 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 flow in our lives. So, but how can we defeat this fear? Uh, two things I have, uh, I would like to mention here. Like, first is we should know that God is with us. Isaiah forty one ten says, "Do not be afraid, for I am with you." So, as an individual, as a believer, as a person, as a child of God, as a as people of God, if we only know this that god is with me emmanuel god is with me he is with us you know no and when we say this out loud whenever we are in uh, whenever we are going through that fear stage or whenever we come we are encountered or we confront any fear you know that is the moment when we have to say that god is with me god is with us you know when he is with us and when we know that he is with us and not only knowing that he is with us you know even that will not be enough but uh, we need to say that to ourselves we need to say it out loud you know whenever we are like there's a, uh, there's no there's nothing wrong in being fearful but we can avoid uh, fearing when when we uh, say the word of God when we say it out loud. That will help us, you know, uh, uh, to keep the fear away. So first is we need to uh, confess, and we need to when we need to know, we need to believe that God is with us, no matter what. Uh, we see in Psalms twenty three, David says that even though I walk through the valleys of the shadows of death. I will fear no evil. So he is making an open declaration that I will fear no evil. Fear is there, but I will fear no evil. And the second thing is, we see uh, uh, Paul encouraging the church in Ephesians. Uh, in Ephesus, he is saying in chapter 3, verse 18, he expresses his desire for the church for the people in uh for the people uh, in in the Ephesus church he expresses his desire that he wants them to be rooted and grounded in the love of god he wants them to know the love of god his the love of god it's uh, the it's height and length and breadth he wants the church to know the love of god which passes knowledge so knowing that God loves you, that is my the the scriptural uh, verse that I have taken of uh, First John four eighteen. That knowing that God loves you, uh, we know that we love God, and we are very happy about it that we love God. But we should also know that our love for God is not faithful. It is not faithful. You know, sometimes we will uh, do things that will not please God, that is displeasing to God. Sometimes we do things. So our love may, you know, uh, change. It's not faithful love. But we should know God's love. When we know God's love, it is unconditional love. It is agape love. It is faithfulness. He is faithful towards us in his love. So when we know that God loves us, and we and when we believe this, when we uh, one, one minute more out loud that yes, God loves me no matter what. God loves me, and uh, and He is able to deliver me from uh, uh, this fear that I'm facing. So, but how will this happen? When you will seek him, when you will go in his presence, when you will seek the face of God, when you will spend time in his presence, when you will get yourself filled with his love, that is the moment when, when, you, when you're filled with God's love, you can keep the fears away from you. And so uh, first uh, John 4, 18, it says that, you know, God's love is perfect. And this perfect love, 
can cast all the fear from our lives. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Thank you, Rosalind. That was good. Uh, so I think that's all time we have for um, today. That was good. Everyone, uh, John, uh, Zeritoli, Rosalind, thanks for presenting. That was good. Some good thoughts that you had presented. Very nice. Um, yeah, OK. Uh, Isaac has a question. Uh, how do uh, So you can present from your phone, uh, Isaac. That's not a problem. I'm just trying to see if somebody's uh, speaking, if I can actually do the PowerPoint. Um, uh, I think that should be possible. Let's. I'll try that out. So if in any case, um, what you can do, Isaac, is maybe you can put it on the stream. If you have a presentation, you can put it on the stream. And also, those who have already you know, done the uh, presentation today, uh, please share your outline on the stream. Right? Please upload your outline on the stream. Right? Uh, I think you know what to do, how to do that. So you just upload your outline, and the sermon outline on the stream and your presentation. Like uh, Selitoli and John Paul, you had the presentation. You can upload it. OK, uh, others, uh, and also, yeah, Isaac, you know, if you have the presentation, but you just have your phone, so that way uh, we can actually see how if someone else can present. OK, we'll just see if someone else can do that. And that way, uh, I think you can, you know, you can just keep talking, uh, and then someone else can move the PowerPoint. I hope that helps. OK, so uh, we will meet again on uh, in our next class um, and then continue with our uh, the rest of the presentations. Please check the stream for the list of people who are going to be presenting next class. Right. OK. And uh, Lyndon, um, we'll see uh, probably, uh, you know, we'll, we'll just see after um, the, the scheduled presentations are over. You can be ready for presenting next class and uh, maybe we can just do uh, an extra 12 minutes after we finish, and then go into your presentation as well. OK. Right. Thank you so much, everyone. Uh, John, I'm sorry we missed recording your presentation. Yeah, that's OK, <laughs> <laughs> OK. Right. See you, guys. Bye-bye. God bless.